Our case study for asthma, we have a 27-year-old man who presents with increasing shortness of breath, wheezing, fatigue, cough, stuffy nose, watery eyes, and post-nasal drainage for four days. The past medical history, the patient was diagnosed with asthma at the age of 18 months, moderate persistent asthma since the age of 19, perineal allergic rhinitis for 15 years, 15 years of allergic rhinitis. Family history, father with history of allergic rhinitis and allergy to fats. So what's the most likely trigger for this patient's asthma attack? We know that this patient is an asthmatic patient, but what triggered the attack, this latest attack? The most likely trigger is viral respiratory infection. Uh, clinical manifestations that support uh, this viral infection include the stuffy nose, the red watery eyes, the post-nasal drainage, and the mild uh, sore throat and the low-grade fever. And this is a usual trigger uh, agent in asthma patients. Production of clear yellow uh, sputum. Identify three major factors that have likely contributed to the development of asthma in general in this patient. Premature birth, they noticed that Premature birth is one of the risk factors of asthma. It's a statistical finding. Positive family history of sensitivity to airborne allergens. Family history is very important when you diagnose asthma in young age. Patient history of allergic rhinitis is another uh, risk factor for asthma in this patient. For chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, we have a 61-year-old man who presents to the ER with a three-day history of progressive dyspnea, cough, and increased production of sputum. Dyspnea, cough, sputum. Dyspnea, cough, sputum, COPD. Dyspnea, cough, wheezes, asthma. Attacks of dyspnea, cough, wheezes, that's asthma. Dyspnea, cough, sputum, kind of persistent, that's COPD. And notice the age difference, of course. Identify this patient's most significant risk factor for COPD. It's going to be one single most significant factor, which is smoking. That's it. Smoking is number one cause of COPD. Also, positive family history might play a role. Might, there might be some genetic component to it, but without smoking, it is smoking. It is smoking. Maybe family history can help, but smoking is the major risk factor for COPD. What are the clinical manifestations of chronic bronchitis? What are the clinical manifestations of chronic bronchitis? Of course, it is productive cough, excessive sputum production. Chronic bronchitis patients are more cyanotic. They are cyanotic, and of course, shortness of breath. In chronic bronchitis, you get the manifestations of right-sided strain and failure. You get jugular venous distension, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, and swelling lower limb edema and you get uh, manifestations of pulmonary hypertension in the chest radiograph, and you get large pulmonary vasculature. Uh, oxygen levels are low. Hematocrit and hemoglobin concentrations are high. That's uh, polycythemia. And the FEV1 is low, and the FVC is low, and of course the ratio is always less than 70%. What are the clinical manifestations of emphysema in this patient? You need to have both chronic bronchitis and emphysema. I don't mean you need, I mean we usually find both manifestations of asthma and emphysema in patients, in these patients. Usually emphysema, uh, the patient will look uh, kind of thin and significant weight loss and will show marked exercise intolerance and will use the accessory muscles to breathe and the patient will have this barrel-shaped chest. You will see the manifestations of hyperinflation, barrel-shaped chest, and the breath sounds are gonna be scanty, and the patient is gonna follow the pursed lip breathing technique, and the patient is gonna be tachypnic. Uh, the patient is hyperinflated, and you get hyper resonance, and the large anthroposterior diameter of the lung in chest radiograph, and the presence of bully observed in the chest radiograph, and of course, the FEV1 is low and the FVC is low. What are the clinical manifestations of pulmonary hypertension or core pulmonary in this patient? 
Eventually, patients with COPD, they put too much strain on the right side of the heart because of the pulmonary vasoconstriction and pulmonary hypertension. This will cause the right ventricle to exert more pressure to push the blood against the vasoconstricted pulmonary vessels. So the right ventricle will get hypertrophied and eventually the right ventricle will fail. Right ventricular hypertrophy and failure secondary to COPD and chronic obstructive lung disease and pulmonary hypertension is called core pulmonary. How is it going to be manifest? Manifestations of right-sided failure, ankle edema, jugular venous distension, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, fluid wave within abdomen with tenderness and distension, uh, prominent S3, and large pulmonary vasculature observed in the chest radiograph.